Welcome back to our series on transitioning seasons. I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service, your family and consumer science agent. You can see I got a lot of stuff. I had a lot of stuff last time and pulling everything out because we are looking at how we might take something and transition it from that fall into our, our holiday season, maybe it's Christmas, uh, and have it all come together where we can just kind of switch things out simply. I shared with you last time, I think for my mental health and hopefully for everyone else's, the simpler we can make those transitions, the better it is for all of us. Last time we talked about some outdoor decorations. We did our tomato cages, which I've kept out for decoration for this time as well. This time we're going to, I am so excited about this project. It is so fun. So what we're starting out with this time, we're talking about repurposing. What are some of the things that you may have in your garage, out in your shed that you can just pull out? Whether that's your fall decor, your Christmas decor, the things you're gonna go through. This one, think about those kids and grandkids, all the toys they had and where those got boxed up and stuck. Or maybe next time you're at the thrift store or a garage sale, you see one of these little plastic doll houses. Okay, so this is actually a picture of the one I have in front of me, how it started out. And we are gonna transition it into a dual decoration that you can use for the season. So basically, let me go ahead and open it up. What I have done is I have gone ahead and spray painted it. And we are going to have a haunted house, and then we're gonna transition to a gingerbread house. Now I know I shared with you last time, there are a lot of things you can do for fall and bringing that on. I'm so ready for fall and cooler weather. So having those fall decorations is great to kind of get us in that mindset. If you don't do Halloween, which some people don't, that's perfectly okay. If you do the whole thing brown or even with the black, you could just decorate it with your fall vibes. You know, like we used the, the garland last time maybe even some, um, this is just your raffia, this is the actual crepe that you untwist, just paper twists that you can make bows and things out of to add that color and give it that overall fall decorated look with some pumpkins and things like that so that you can still make that transition from fall to Christmas. Okay, so I did just spray paint it. You, it doesn't really matter what brand you get for spray paint, but one of the things you wanna consider if you look, and I'm not sure how close you can actually see what it says, but one of the main things, this actually says it bonds to plastic. So this is not the $2 can of spray paint that I use for lots of other things. This one was a little more expensive because it specifically works with, it works with other things too. It talks about wood, metal, all the things we can use it for in other ways, but you want it to bond to that plastic. This covered in one coat. Now, I'm gonna just be honest, I was trying to do it outside and dirt got stuck to it, so I had to put on another coat to cover up some of that. But this actually covers really well just for the basic plastic. The other, what would also be really fun for this, maybe you don't have a small dollhouse, but you have that plastic playhouse that's out there that the grandkids have outgrown. How cool would that be to have a full-size gingerbread house that you could actually put out in your yard? Uh, so those are some things that you can consider as we talk about what you can do with this project. Some of the things that you might have, again, that I just dug out that I found in our stash. I'm going to go ahead and shut this up and we will start with, so it does just close. Okay, so now I have two distinct sides. I just did a, a black satin for the haunted side and this is, what is the name of this color? Chestnut for this side. There's also a coffee bean, which is a little darker, depending on what kind of brown you wanna have. But so those kind of paint colors were put on here. I just laid it out flat, I sprayed it. Um, depending on what you want to show through, and if you're worried about that, you can spray the inside as well, if you think you need it. So we are gonna start with the haunted side. So there are some very simple ways to just dress this up where you don't have to add a whole lot. And so one of those, if you can see, right here where I've done the trim. Obviously I haven't done the whole thing, partly because I can't decide what all I wanna do with my house. So if you guys have suggestions, let me know. Uh, if you come across some more at garage sales or their stores, let me know that, because I would love to have some more houses to work on, because this is a really fun project. Um, 
But what I have done with this trim, there it is, it rolled under the house. This is just a silver Sharpie. Now you can also use, we have a variety of paint pens. Go through your craft closet. What have you got that's gonna work for what you wanna do? Um, so like I said, this is just a white paint pen if you wanna do that. I have a copper Sharpie, which I haven't tried on here yet to see how it looks. But one of the things I saw in just looking at examples where other people had done this type of project was if you take just this, the silver Sharpie or the gray paint, however you wanna do that, and just kind of do those edges. See how that just kind of pops out at you and really gives it that haunted movie feel. Uh, the other thing I think would be really fun for this, and I'll have to dig through his stuff to find him, is my younger son has a whole set of Scooby-Doo figurines that would be really cute with the haunted house. So think about what you have, the things you have around that could kind of give it that idea. So with the Sharpie, this is literally just coloring on the edges taking the marker and going over that trim wherever it kind of pops out to add that. So again, when we talk about crafting for our mental health and how some things are too difficult and maybe kind of stressful, this is very relaxing type of thing to do to just sit and trace out that trim. Uh, maybe while you're listening to the news, that's not always uh, a good mental health break, but listening to music, listening to a book, something like that. This would be a great thing to work on. Doesn't require a whole lot of concentration. Uh, and, but so again, little things you can add. We have a lot of these little jewels from different projects we've worked on. Give it a little kick, a little sparkle to come off of there. You can definitely pick the colors that blend with what you wanna do. I found this sweet little ghost guy, so not a scary ghost, but I found him in a stash of decorations as I was pulling stuff out to do this. So just that little added pop of, hey, this is a haunted house. There's my little ghost sticking his head out. Okay, I also had, from when we did our fall projects, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, these little skeletons left over that were like four for a dollar. So I have a whole set of these guys who could very simply add to how we want to decorate the house. I can't get him to sit up. A little hot glue, a glue dot, something along those lines would hold those in place and give it that, it doesn't take a lot to just give it that, hey, that's a haunted house and give you that moment of thinking about that. I also found in my stash um, these giant Google eyes, which are kind of fun. And look how cute that would be just to make it into, and, and you can turn them, they're different shapes, you can turn it either way, kind of fix his personality however you want to, but just give it big eyes. Or in our stash of pumpkin decorations, I found these eyes that again, are just kind of fun to stick on there. And now there's something living in that house that's watching you. So all kinds of decorations, all the things you can think about. Again, from the last time we did fall decor, this is just some very simple, it looks almost like old dead trees that you could run around here, string through, to give it black on black. You can't really see it from there, but from here, it adds that three-dimensional texture to it and just gives it that kind of spooky feeling. So things you can think about how to do that. And so then the idea is, whether we've put leaves and pumpkins and now it's for fall, or we had it as a haunted house, we're ready to transition to that next holiday. And it can be a lot to transition to that next holiday. We all know that. All I have to do is take it and turn it. And now I'm gonna have a gingerbread house that looks wonderful for my winter type holidays and going into the Christmas season. This can be, again, anything you want it to be. So some of the things you can think about, here's an example of one, and I can show you two. This is an example of a haunted house one that's way more in depth than what I just talked about. It doesn't have to be this intense, um, but it definitely could be. And then here's a pretty fancy gingerbread house. Now this one actually has, you can actually purchase uh, at the dollar store, at your craft stores, at your big box stores, all kinds of set of little plastic fake candy for decorations, pull those out, go through your ornaments and see what's in there. What I have today, I have a whole box full of chenille stems. So break out your pipe cleaners, one uh, red and one white, made these two little candy canes, 
Okay, which again, so we, we've sprayed this with the brown to give it that gingerbread feel. And then maybe over here on the garage, we can add our candy canes and decorate that up. Okay, and then I had enough left over to roll up to make a little mint. So it can be, say the top window's not there. It can be small things, um, buttons. I found all kinds of red and green buttons in the stash as well. So things that you can add on here to decorate. Now, the real part of making it the gingerbread house is the icing, right? The white part, the snow that we wanna add. So again, there are a lot of ways that we can do that. We can just take some regular paint and we can sponge that on where we want it to show. Uh, again, with our paint pens, we can draw things on there that we want to be. These were in my stash, I had these. Look through and see what you've got and go, oh yeah, that would work. Again, the idea behind this is not that we've spent a lot of money to create something, but that we've thought about our finances, we've put those things together and we've repurposed something to be decor that we can share throughout the season. Okay, but so the funnest thing I think for doing that icing, this is puff paint. You can find usually in the fabric decorating section. So it's just that puff paint. You can squeeze that on there in the lines wherever you want that to go and give it that three dimensional, hey, there's the frosting that's part of my gingerbread house and have something sweet and special. And you can actually do it, again, this one's pretty fancy, even if all you have is the frosting and you don't add a lot of other candy and detail, it's going to be super cute in your house and make you have that holiday feeling. So then another suggestion, because this does open and it's hollow on the inside, these are just battery operated candles and I have various sizes somewhere in all of my stash that I came across. So put those new batteries in those, pop them in there and now it lights up whether that's for the haunted side or the gingerbread side, right? We have a haunted side, and then we're gonna flip that right around and have the gingerbread side. I hope that you have found something fun that you wanna do to transition for the seasons as we put out that decor that's gonna make us feel good as we go all throughout the next few months. Again, I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service. This has been Seasonal Transitions. I will be back here next time with another repurposed craft.